I hope everyone enjoying this beautiful snow with a beautiful um, New Year days. On behalf of a head Dharma Master Kyungsan and uh, one Buddhist community in North America and South America, I wish you happiness, wisdom, peace, and health. Compassion and wisdom throughout the new year. Each day you are filled with these blessings of mindfulness and meditation. This past year was one of the transition. In one Buddhist community, we elected the new Spring Council leaders, and this new council will preside the uh, 100th years of uh, one Buddhist uh, celebration, exemplifying as a meditator, spiritual life, or with a faith, perseverance, dedication, and courage, and always have an inquiring mind asking questions, critical questions, as well as um, compassion, wisdom, mindfulness, and meditation. If you look at our world, we have a lot of problems in the world, but they are not only responsibility for just a few leaders, but it should be everyone cooperating and building solidarity to reduce and eliminate suffering in our human world, especially beginning in our life. We personally, at least in this new year, find ways to cultivate so you can reduce and end the suffering in your life first, so you can help life around you and extending to the world. In one Dharma Center, we just finished it year end and new year retreat, sending and letting go and letting go and letting go of all the obstacles, challenges and hindrance the end of last year and then receive the new year with the sunrise meditation on top of the hill up here. And still we are in the middle of a one-month retreat. Now my question is, uh, if you were here during retreat, uh, how is your New Year resolution? Are you keeping every single day? At least the five days. Are you? Or if you didn't attend this retreat, do you have a New Year resolution? Yes. And only one person has a re New Year resolution here? Yes, you have it too. New Year resolution is a very critical in Buddhist understanding that you design your life. You have a kind of a, have a purpose of this year. You could be healthier or happier or meditate every day if it's impossible to do practice every day, at least practice once a week. Or your New Year resolution could be just coming on Saturdays. So you make sure you have at least once a week you pause and stop and reflect about your life, your mind, and your being on earth. So New Year resolution is a way to make that kind of a transition to begin a new life in this new year. If you look at the One Dharma Center facility and land and trails, uh, we had a vision first. It took 16 years to complete. The vision began in 1995 when we opened One Buddhism United Nations office on 57th Street. And at that time, I was serving as a president of a religious NGOs at the United Nations and organized two 
spiritual and uh, meaningful event to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the UN. That's why UN Secretary General at that time, Boutras Boutras Ghali, sent us a very nice message asking one Buddhism to play a spiritual role and playing a very distinctive role to bring ethical, moral, and spiritual values in the work of the United Nations. That day, we had a vision of this retreat center. But we just we had a vision, nothing else. So after we have a vision, the second step was that uh, we have to think about the process, how we're going to accomplish it. So think about the, your new resolution in this process. You have a vision to reduce and end the suffering in your life this year, then you have to plan how to do it. Maybe practice meditation every day, or attending retreat as many uh, as possible, or something like that. Incorporate something that you can actualize your vision, your goal, your purpose and focus of your life in this year. Then first step, we did the uh, fundraising. We began fundraising. Whoever come to us, we begin to talk about. Uh, it would be nice if we have a retreat center in the United States can serve as a Western center, Western headquarters. And along the way, people showed up and uh, helped us uh, to buy land. So the process began to look for the land. After we got this land, and we keep fundraising because we didn't have uh, nothing to build this facility. So in the process, we found the donors to build these uh, beautiful facilities and the be making beautiful entrance, dry long, long driveways to get here. But all those things was possible because we had that fundraising activities. When people heard about it, you know, they want to contribute. And now you had a funding available, and then we looked for the architect, interview the five, best architect in, in the United States and ended up with someone in Manhattan. And then after talking with the architect, we gave a very specific vision. This should be a spiritual community. This should be an eco-friendly community. We gave a very specific theme that not a single material here, except necessity, use all local material use all natural material, and uh, use uh, renewable energy. We want to help our Earth, our planet Earth, to, to be as they are, instead of we are adding that um, CO2 level. And then we, we draw, the, we draw the, all the architectural uh, details, so this is a part of our new resolution today. You have to draw in the paper so you can follow through. Unless you have a very clear resolution on the paper in front of you, it will be hard to remember and mindful and, and build along the way. So after we completed all those drawings, very detailed drawings, uh, structure, how high it is, how large it is, uh, plumbing and electricity, everything laid out. And then we look for the builder who can follow through the plan, follow through, following this architectural drawing, build exactly what we intended to do. So if we have a new resolution today, every day we're going to practice it. So later on we'll have time to to write our own new, new Year resolutions, make it specific so easy to follow. Today, beginning this New Year, I have a new vision. Since we completed the first vision, now I have a second and bigger and larger new vision. To make it one Dharma Center, a unique meditation and retreat center in the world. I have a vision to create one Dharma center to become the most beautiful, the most inspiring place 
and to become the most ideal spiritual community through collective meditation and practicing mindfulness together. It is possible, I have vision that to make the best program available here with the best teamwork and with the most spiritual experience to change ourselves first, transforming ourselves first and changing humanity one breath at a time. So today, I will deliver three important action plans suggested by Head of Dharma Master for this new year. First, let us cultivate loving kindness and compassion in this year. You are already practicing, you already have a lot of loving kindness and compassion, but this year we are extend, expanding it, enlarge our heart, opening up our heart to practice this loving kindness and compassion because all of us have that seed of loving kindness and compassion in our heart, in our mind. We were born with it. This we call it Buddha nature in everyone, that we have intrinsic goodness and inborn beauty within all of us. However, due to the excessive greed, ego, competition, selfishness, and egocentric uh, thinking, our inborn loving kindness and compassion became weaker. If you look at the beautiful meditation hall such as this, in spite of it's so beautiful, I can see big ego played here. Beautiful place, but echo, problem of echo was a consistent problem from the beginning up until today. The first thing I, I said to myself, I'm going to correct this echo problems. So if you see the plant here, this is a, one of the projects to reduce ecosystem. We will try many different ways to, to re reduce echo problems. And when I thought about it, uh, I asked uh, two big trees from Manhattan Temple, and I asked trees, can you come with me? Happily, both of them said yes. <laughs> so I bought them 10 years ago when they were like this, very small plant. As they grow older and grow and grow, I split it and make it two. But as you see, this is stronger because I separate this one from, from the main tree and they grow them like this. I feel like at least there's somebody in this room watching over me. And these two trees know my past 10 years of history and how, how I was unfolding and growing and meditating. So everything in our retreat center here, in our one dharma center, everything has a multi-purpose. We designed that, that this is a meditation hall. Sometimes it can, it can become lecture hall. Sometimes it become yoga studio and tai chi studio. We do everything here. So these trees, not only first the primary function is serving as a reducing echo in this room, but second function is beautiful, beautify. And third function to me is that softening our energy here so we can meditate well. And fourth function is a remind of impermanence. Remind of impermanence because everything is constantly in a state of changing. Despite of this uh, advancement of material goods and material things, 
with the scientific advancement, we experience and we meet much more unhappy people in our world. We need wisdom, we need courage to help us uncover and cultivate our loving kindness and compassion. For this to happen, we need to stop our excessive greedy mind and live in harmony with the, our Buddha nature. There is greedy mind in the world all over. But sometimes we have a greedy mind even in spiritual community. In Manhattan Temple, where I served past 19 years, we had a very intimate groups getting together, meditate together, and get to know each other, building real bonding. And after a while, our community keep growing, and new people's coming, newcomers coming, and our core groups came to me, let's just stop growing. And I said, why? Um, we are just so comfortable here, we are just so happy here, and don't go to UN. They asked me, do, do not go to UN, so they can spend the time all day long with me in Manhattan Center. And they asked me not to travel around the world to advance interfaith cooperation and uh, interfaith understanding because they don't want to miss uh, Dharma talk on Sundays. And I asked them, do you think when Buddhism invested this kind of a very expensive building with a lot of money, just for a few of you, not to share with any, anybody else? So it could be happening here too. If you attach to something you like, if you find someone you like or something you like, we feel like uh, uh, we are attaching to it. It's the same thing with the human relationship. If you have attachment, you have to be very careful not to become possessive, not to become uh, controlling. In relationship, even though you love your spouse or uh, you know, your children very much, if you begin to control them, if you have a possessiveness, then trouble begins. Due to impermanence, things change. If you like it, we try to own it. So we claim that ownership and entitlementship and possessiveness and attachment create a lot of problem in human society. So think about whether you have that kind of attachment, that kind of a possessiveness, that kind of a wanting to control, or, and to have just the ownership. It is easy to be like that. And think about the always original intention. Do you think one Buddhism in Korea invested that kind of money to buy the land and build this facility just for the, a few lucky people who had to, happened to be here for the first year? Or our intention is really transforming ourselves and sharing this beautiful teaching and practice with the rest of the world. If we do the way we do at this time, we will go in bankruptcy in a few years. After my transition, leadership transition took place November 26, I received all the document and I go through, I, when I look at the finance document, I just couldn't believe it that total cost of 2012 was 300,000. The only amount we raised through retreat, weekly program, donation, and partners using uh, facility fees, just a total 60,000. So 24,000 came from Korea, from 866 people, 66 donors. 
So when I receive this one, should we continue like this? Then I have to spend most of my time in Korea fundraising to maintain, just to maintain, just as it is. If I fail, we will go bankruptcy. It's really touched my American pride. I've been here now 32 years. I am American citizen. And I have a big pride that America can offer very big leadership in the world because this is the strongest country in the world, the wealthiest country in the world, the largest economy in the world. Why should we rely on Koreans for our own existence here? I think we need to find ways to self-support and self-reliance. That is one of our practices, one of our daily practice. Not only spiritually self-reliance, physically, healthy-wise, be practice, yoga, exercise, good diet, good sleeping. You have to be physically self-reliant and you have to be financially and materially self-reliant. We have got to practice that not only individual life, but here as a collective community. And we need to overcome greedy mind and selfish mind and letting go of this competing mind and greedy mind. So our intrinsic beauty, our inner goodness can manifest naturally throughout our five senses and mind. In this new year, we need to become leaders of compassion leaders of loving kindness by just connecting our inborn wisdom, our inborn those beauty of Buddha nature. Then we can become embodiment of Iran Sang here, embodiment of our Buddha nature. We are able to embody this Dharmakaya Buddha through our minds and bodies. Then we can enjoy enjoy heaven, enjoy paradise here on earth. Paradise, heaven, is not a place. It is a state of mind. So think about your mind. Think about your state of mind. Heaven is a state of mind with a full of gratitude, full of compassion, full of loving kindness, and blessing, and caring, and happiness liberty, openness, and generosity. If we cultivate this quality in this new year, we are building heaven in your mind, building paradise in your heart. And hell is a state of mind with a full of hatred and anger, with a full of delusion and greed, and full of negativity, and complaining and blaming, and destructiveness, and darkness, and harming oneself and harming others. So in this new year, we need cultivate. Let's cultivate more loving kindness and compassion, and just restore it. That's there. You just uncover your cloud of this negativity. When you remove the cloud, you can see your Buddha nature. As some of us experienced that, when we hiked to the top of the hill Sunday morning, it was a thick cloud in the sky. Somehow, while we are practicing walking meditation, that's the sun. I don't know, your prayers, you know, the very powerful meditators together practicing it and watching eastern sunrise. In the beginning, out of the thick cloud all of the, in the sky, but that spot, just in front of the sky, the cloud was removing a little bit, show us hue, orange and red hue appears. So we had sunrise meditation and New Year prayer there. And then we did the one more working meditation practice on the top of the hill here, I was ready to come down. And Reverend Choi pointing me, eastern sky. So I just turned my head. When I look at the eastern sky, 
I think all of you were there, saw that. Only that area, the, the thick cloud moved out, and only that area, sun, just enough space of a sun, cleared, and we saw beautiful sunrise. First sun in this new year, collectively together. So I, I thought it's a miracle. That is the exact symbol that we have this Buddha nature like a sun. Even today, high above is the sun, it is shining. Your Buddha nature is shining. But you cover it up with a greedy mind, with a competition, with a egoistic thinking, and selfish mind. So we are here meditating. Okay, we acknowledge it, I have it. But you can go, and you let it go, and coming back to breath. One breath at a time, one breath at a time. Then you clear up that cloud, that spot, so you can tackle, tap into your Buddha nature. Second, we need to enhance sensitivity and our empathy. Many people may experience difficulties and challenges this year, even at this time. This is why warm-hearted empathy is truly necessary as a way to encourage people around us. As a human being, we have a tendency to practice compassionate action. compassionate thinking and compassionate word toward just our loved one, maybe our children, our parents, our spouse. We have a tendency to do that, which means that you have a quality just to expand it a little bit, open up a little bit. If you have a circle of five people you are carrying, then practice that loving kindness. And next step is expand it a little bit, include our neighbors, include our relatives, include our friends, include our co-workers in our prayer, holding. So increasing a little bit like this, keep practicing it. Then same quality of loving kindness and compassion. Enlarge it a little more, include all people in New York State. Expand it, expand it, and then all Americans. And expand it, expand it to the whole humanity. And continuously expand it to all forms of life. So it is possible because we all have that loving kindness within our own mind, within our own Buddha nature. In This kind of a difficult time or a harsh time, we have to reach out our neighbors in need and share their burdens and plant hope in their heart, thus changing humanity together, one breath at a time. It is for us to be more considerate and willingness to embrace our neighbors who have a tough time and difficult time and challenging time. Let us take the initiative to make this a world of empathy, a world of a warm-hearted mind in this new year. Third and final, let us build a new paradigm by working together, not dividing people, not separated, but find ways to build unity in diversity and diversity in unity. In one Buddhist philosophy, all things and all beings in the universe are interdependent and interconnected as a symbol of here with everyone else and everything else. We call it fourfold grace. We are therefore very important to each other.
we cannot live without those someone else and something else if we do not have air to breathe if we do not have water to drink and wash and cook if we do not have rain if we do not have a sun arising in the eastern sky every day if we do not have a sunlight if we do not have stars and night all of this really helping us to sustain our lives and soil and trees and other human beings and other forms of life and dharma and laws it is very important to understand governing principle of this changing reality in our world in our life those governing principle is cause and effect cause and effect simply means that giving is receiving receiving is giving so what goes around comes around in korean proverbs say that anything happening especially good things in your life 70 percent is a luck good luck and 30 percent are our own effort so we have election in the United States and Korea South Korea we elected a women president this is the first time in Korean history we have a women president in the United States I think the first time in American history African president we elected so how come some people are lucky when they want to do something so good people helping them out sometimes if they you need the money they they provide the funding if you need the workload volunteers appears and some people think that she is so lucky always get support and be jealous of that woman or jealous of that man but let's think about it 70 percent anything happening in the world has some truth is it 70 percent are good luck and 30 percent as our own effort why had that my master very clearly described the new year day morning in korea that this is 70 percent of a good luck is not really good luck at all but your previous work your, in your previous life you accumulated a very very good deed and helping a lot of people and if you have a material share with all needy people because of your previous life's good deed and, and good compassionate serving life and this life you are receiving it today present life present day present moment is a total sum of the past so let's talk about today is January 5th we call it today fourth we call it yesterday and fourth yesterday we call the third as yesterday and third we call it second as yesterday and New Year day we call December 31st is yesterday so what this means is that we have endless yesterdays and that yesterdays related to the, what we have done in the past so we, you, if you have a really good year ending ceremony with us here that day you transformed if we begin new year with a really good plan of a new year resolution today It'll be different. So total sum of past day is happening today, here and now in our lives. And what we do, how we believe, and what we think, and how we think, how we communicate, and how we act, all creating our future reality. So let's say today, fifth is today, sixth is tomorrow, 
But six day tomorrow comes, we will call the day of the tomorrow seven as tomorrow. If a seventh day arrives, we call eighth as tomorrow. What does this mean then? There will be endless future. So we expand today as a present life, and yesterday as a previous life, and tomorrow as future lives. Then we have an endless future, and then we will have endless future. I'm saying endless future and endless past, which means that your life here and now, at the moment, has eternity. Nothing wasted. Everything will come back with a sometime high interest to us. We gotta deal with consequence of our own action, our own word, our own speech. And our own thought. That's why 70% seems like a good luck, but 70% is prepared in the past. So think about it today. If you've been practicing meditation from young childhood, like Michael, continuation of those practice make you who you are now. How you live your life, who you are now, is really shaping and reshaping, molding and remolding yourself in the future. So, if you have any problem, do you gonna, are you gonna complain somebody else for your problem or your challenge? We tend to do that as human beings. But coming to One Dharma Center and learning this One Buddhist teaching means that now you become leaders of this compassionate, loving kindness and empathy, as well as uh, this building new paradigm together by working together. Which means that you become responsible for your own life. And you are responsible for your own situation. Nobody else is doing it. You may be lucky to have good people to help you out, which means that you help them out. In this 21st century, called us global solidarity. The scale of a problem arising in the world is not can be solved by just a, a few. As a, as a good example, when I was growing up in Korea, we didn't have any problem with the sand storm in the spring. Now when I visit Korea, almost uh, springtime, a lot of sand storm covering whole Korea, not because of Korean problem because of a Chinese problem. Chinese cut all the trees and the, the, their land become desert. And when strong wind blowing, all those uh, barren desert, the sand flowing over to South Korea. These environmental problems, they don't respect the border of country. They should be stay within China, but they just uh, keep flowing over, extended. When we have a problem with the tsunami in Japan, all those radiation, even extended to the ocean, the far, 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 of course, Korea, and even some people are saying even reached to Hawaii. So if you look at this kind of environmental degradation and environmental disasters, do not stay within their national board. Which means that we need a global solidarity. We need everyone's cooperation and collaboration to preserve and to take care of our planet Earth as our own house, as our home. So we are at the critical moment. And it is a time to really reflect, deep, deep reflection is required. Not only for better relationship between humans, better relationship between 
husband and wife or better relationship between parents and children. But we need a better relationship between humans and non-humans, non-human partners. We need a better relationship between humans and nature, human and other forms of life. The second, actually first day of my duty here at One Dharma Center, I think that is November 27, uh, one neighbor came to us and the reason uh, of his visit was that hunters using our land, we have a 426 acres of land, and the hunters hunted and this uh, shot it a deer crossed somebody's land and uh, died. So the man looking at the deer that we did not take care of it. So he came to us and said, please take good care of your, your land. So we don't want to hear the shot, gunshot and we don't want to see shot at dead deer. So we are building this kind of a new paradigm, building better relationship with the other human beings and non-human partners. So we want to model our life on nature. Look at the water. We become like a water. If you become like a water, water never resisted. If water travels down, hit the big rock, human beings are hitting it, right? Same thing, hitting again and again. But water, oh, there is a big rock. Hello, rock. Hello, challenges. The water goes around it. And travel, continue travel. So we need to learn from water and be like water. Means soft, gentle, kindness, compassionate. And empathy. And this is a new paradigm. It's a different paradigm. The energy in the universe is shifted. Consciousness in the universe is shifted from this hard ride, we call it the hard power. You know, if things go wrong, we, we bomb them using military power. I think we need it now. It's a time to use a more soft power than, than hard power. So we made a decision and I personally made a commitment to preserve our land. And any, anybody coming into our land, our property, one Dharma Center, be safe and enjoy their life. Everybody who are coming here, we welcome you and use our facility and transform yourself through meditation and mindfulness and become happier and healthier person. At the same time, any deer is coming to our land, our property, we want to protect them. We want to, all the deer in our land enjoy their life, not cut by shock, gunshot. And I want to protect all the birds in our, uh, our property here, whoever fly over or enjoy it. We want to build a bird sanctuary here. So our school children in this local area come and do the board watching and star watching, all kind of wondrous things we can do here if we build a better relationship with the other human beings and other non-human partners. So it is the time to change. It is a time for transition, time to return to mutually benefiting and better relationship, including uh, all different forms of a relationship, better relationship with each other. So in this new year, let us create a world of universal solidarity and strong collaboration to bring kindness loving kindness and compassion to all living beings, including all human beings, including all forms of lives, all different animals who are living in this, especially in our land. And that way we are advancing well-being of humanity. By advancing your own well-being first. 
So let us make it the best year in your life throughout each day, living full life each day, most beautifully, most meaningfully, with the meditation and practice of mindfulness. So we can not only enjoy our life and transforming our energy and our selves and helping life around us and helping humanity through our prayers, through our kind words and our own action. Thank you.